15 p.m. Um, we're going to call this meeting to order. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chapter 9 of the Laws of 1991 requires that we inform persons other than students who attend meetings within a school of the proper procedures to evacuate a building in an orderly and timely manner in the event of a fire emergency. If you must evacuate this room because of an emergency, please exit through the door located in the rear and right and proceed through the doors that exit directly to the parking lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to read a notice of election, board members 2016-17, the annual election of members of the Board of Education of the Baldwin Union Free School District was held on May 17, 2016. Two full three-year three -year terms were filled. Petitions were received from the following, Magdalene Campbell, Susan Pools, Eric Harrison, Joel Press, Van White. The vote was as follows. Joel Press, 1,162. Susan Pools, 608. Eric Harrison, 570. Matt Deloney Campbell, 570. Van White, 558. Joel Press and Susan Pools were declared elected to the three-year term commence commencing July 1st, 2016 and expiring on June 30th, 2019. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. She's not trying to move. She's not 
uh, Ingram and Smith, LLP, and Hawkins, Delfield, and Wood. We, don't, we just do this as... Yes, you just do it all at the end. Somebody makes a motion. Okay. District Clerk, Mary Hobbs, external auditor, Cohen, and the now LLP. Claims Auditor, Stuart Fishbein, Internal Auditor, Giovanna Di Fiore, School Physician, Dr. Sue Ann Coal Connolly, Civil Service Coordinator, Dr. Michelle Gallo, Title IX Compliance Officer, Dr. Michelle Gallo, Sexual Harassment Compliance Officer, Dr. Michelle Gallo, Officer, Dr. Stephanie Boulder, High School Coordinator, Lori Buckley, Middle School Coordinator. Records Access Management Officer, Dr. Stephen Draper. Assistant Records Access Management Officer, Mary Hobbs. Health and Safety Officer, Russ Randazzo. Asbestos LEA Designee, Russ Randazzo. Committees and Subcommittees on Special Education and Preschool Special Education and Surrogate Parents. Uh, we received a list. I'm not going to read through all those names. The Impartial Hearing Officers, same thing, we received a list. Uh, Section 504 Coordinator, Dr. Edward Murphy. Students, Dr. Michelle Gallo, for adults. Compliance Coordinator for ADA, Dr. Edward Murphy. Census Enumerator, Dr. Edward Murphy. Attendance Officer, Dr. Edward Murphy. It's a busy man. Central Treasurer, Student Activities at the Middle School, Dina Prado. Prado. Central Treasurer, Student Activities at the High School, Patty Sisko. Chemical Hygiene Officer, Lauren McCarthy. Control Officer for Bloodborne Pathogens, Eduardo Ramirez. Several. Second. All right, by Mrs. Pagan, second by Mrs. Tereska. Any questions? No? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Registrar appointments for the 2016-17 school year. Walden Union Free School District Board of Ed designates secretaries in each of the district schools and the district office as deputy registrars to register qualified voters in the buildings of the district from July 1, 2016 through June 30, 2017. Uh, district office Mary Hobbs and Carol Becker, high school Barbara Conroy, middle school Evelyn Barrio, Brookside Jean Nocera, Lennox Nancy Salazzo, Meadow Kathy Menz. Plaza, Karen Manorino, and Steele, Glory Vassilato. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan, second by Mrs. Dereska. Any questions? Any questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
they require certain members from the community. They need to come from board, they need to come from the college level, they need to be teachers, and this board is, um, they are, they get together like once every couple months to discuss like the classes that they're offering, the professional development that they're offering, and then at the end of the year they talk about um, the grant that they receive it, and we all sign off on the grant as it, they present the grant to us. Okay. Um, Carla, Lomachino, um, and um, Barbara Shear are the representatives from the school. They have a student who works in the office with them to do some of the paperwork. And um, I served on it last year, or the last couple of years. I'd be willing to do it again unless somebody else. And then after school. I was just going to say, can I just say this might be a factor? Um, teacher Center Policy Board afternoon. Right, three. Uh, save committee during the day. Um, BEA is at night. Uh, Council of PTAs is at night. Uh, AIDS advisory during the day, human relations at night, and memorial scholarship during the day. So that may make a difference for you know people who have have jobs during the day. Okay. And the so AIDS that's, council meets like once a year. I was just going to say a couple of them only meet once or twice during the course of the year. Human advisory how many times during the Yeah, like three or four maybe at most. Yeah. And then you know the council of PTAs they meet monthly. Well. well with the exception of a couple of months, yeah, depending on what, what's going on, as they do the uh, so, and, yeah. okay. so, what did you just have a policy board? Who did that one before? What is the president? That's one. That's one. Oh, that was the one you yeah. were doing talking about. Okay, yeah. so you guys are going to start to get that during the day. Yeah. That's and you're doing both of those. Yeah. And me. You should get a lot of time to do all of it. No. <laughs> 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 my husband says I'm not getting a job. <laughs> um, all right. So C is representative to the SAVE committee. I did that. I'll be happy to do it again. It's, is, it's easy. It mean, it's during the day. What is it? And SAVE is uh, help, like health and safety. Oh, that was uh, the one you do. Yeah. It's, it's the one you do with the rest. Right. right. Okay. With rest, yeah. I'll be happy to do it again. Or. D is liaison to the Baldwin Educational Assembly. Um, I've been doing that for the last several years. Be happy to continue that. Yeah. Unless, I mean, does someone else have an interest? I'd like to attend and be involved, so I think we should still do it. I just want to just. I don't. I, I mean, I don't need it. I'm you just, just attend. Yeah. I attend. Like they discuss, and then we exchange. If they need information or insight. Or it's every other month, right? It's every month, once a month. Okay. Depending on what's going on, you report back to the yeah. where they are. Yeah. Uh, we'll liaison to the uh, Council of PTAs. I think you would be interested in You want to do that? Yeah. Uh, right. The liaison to the AIDS Advisory Council. I would also be interested in doing that. Terrific. I don't know. What is that one? That's, that's actually only a single meeting, and usually held toward the end of the year, and they set policy in terms of um, health and AIDS-related instruction and all of that. It's, it's a single meeting. It takes place in the high school. Uh, it's with Ed Ramirez and, and health, the nurses uh, and health staff, and it's about the program dealing with uh, AIDS-related issues. Okay. Actually, it's actually pretty yes, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Yes. All right. So do that. The next one is liaison to the Human Relations Advisory Council. What I have been doing that. I would do it again. What is? The Human Relations Advisory Council has been around for uh, 40 years anyway. And generally speaking, we have, have monitored human relations programs throughout the district. We have it served as an advisory to the district in terms of um, diversifying everything from the literature that's taught at the high school to um, to bringing in, uh, there's a program that um, brings in representatives of all the world's religions and they do a program in the uh, commons at the high school to expose kids to uh, religious practices in other countries. There's that kind of thing. It's, it's supposedly combats stereotypes, age, race, gender, 
you know, it's cool. So it's day or evening? It's evening. <laughs> or you like that? That would be great. No, go ahead. Be my guest. So the last one is the liaison to the Memorial Scholarship Committee. And what is that? That's also a one meeting. And in the spring, we need to have a board member on the committee up at the high school that decides on the recipient of the Baldwin Memorial Scholarship. There's a scholarship that, that we have. And I believe there's an application process, and you review the applications and, and make the selection. I'd like to do that. Okay. They're all filled. Um, all right, I will read them one more time. Our legislative representative is Karen Reed. Representative to the Local Teacher Center and Policy Board is also Karen Reed. Representative to the State Committee is Mary Jo Hagan. Liaison to the Baldwin Educational Assembly is me. The liaison to the Baldwin Council of PTAs and to the AIDS Advisory Council is to pools and the liaison to the Human Relations Advisory Council and the liaison to the Memorial Scholarship Committee are both in the Do we have a motion for that? Yes. I move. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, just real quick for those of you in the audience who may not know, this is our reorganization meeting, so we're going through a lot of the appointments people and to positions and things like that before we get into the business. So it's going to be a little while before we get to the business, just so you're aware of whether we're not going right into our comment period. Uh, right away, we'll get to that. Um, all right, moving on. Financial management regulations relating to financial accounting in Union Free School District. Commissioner's Regulation Number 2052 of the Codes, Rules, and Regulations of New York State. Chief Account Officers of the District. Salvatore Lombardi, District Treasurer, Carol Smith, Deputy Treasurer, Mary Hobbs, District Clerk, Stephen Draper, Assistant Superintendent for Business and Administrative Services, persons responsible for business management functions, uh, purchasing legal advertising and opening bids, Dr. Stephen Draper, Assistant Superintendent for Business and Administrative Services, Salvatore Lombardi, District Treasurer, Carol Smith, Deputy Treasurer, Michelle Reed, Account Clerk, Mary Hobbs, District Clerk. Are any two employees designated by the Superintendent of Schools? Certification of payroll, Dr. Sherry Alcami, Dr. Michelle Gower. Designation of signatures on checks, Salvatore Lombardi, Carol Smith. Uh, Readoption of policy 3625 relative to procurements that are not required to be publicly bid pursuant to section 104B of the general municipal law. Purchasing agents, Jill McGrath and Dr. Stephen Draper. Transfer of funds as may be required during the school year, Dr. Stephen Draper, Carol Smith, Jill McGrath. Investment of school funds pursuant to New York State Education Law section 1723A and 2131. Salvatore Lombardi Treasurer, Carol Smith, Deputy Treasurer, Dr. Stephen Draper, Assistant Superintendent for Business and Administrative Services. Jill McGrath, Senior Account Clerk. Person designated to apply for grants in aid, Dr. Shari O'Kami. Persons designated to receive service and legal documents, Mary Hopkins. So moved. by Mrs. O'Hagan, second by Mrs. Green. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Designation of official newspaper, the Baldwin Herald. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan, second. Mr. Resco, any questions? Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Other newspapers to be used as needed, the Freeport Baldwin Leader and Newsday. So moved. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan, seconded by Mrs. Resco. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Designation of bank depository for 2016-17, Capital One. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. Dureska. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Designation of Investment Institution Cooperative Liquid Assets Securities System, otherwise known as CLASS. Second. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. Dureska. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The mission statement, belief statement, and broad educational goals 
um, copies of which are in the back on the, on the table there, so you guys can read through them at your leisure. So moved. by Mrs. Reed. Second. by Mrs. Duresco. Any questions? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution pertaining to Section 18 of the New York State Public Officers Law. Moved okay. by Mrs. Duresco. Second. By Mrs. O'Hagan, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all right, establishment of petty cash fund for 2016-17, pursuant to Section 709 of the New York State Education Law. Uh, the amounts of all of these petty cash funds are $75, uh, so I won't read the amount. I'm going to go through each building. Uh, superintendent's office, the administrator is Dr. Sherry O'Hagan, superintendent. Business office, Dr. Stephen Draper. Instructional office, Anthony yeah. Anthony McNella, uh, assistant superintendent. Human resources office, Dr. Michelle Gallo, assistant superintendent, Baldwin High School, Caterina Lafragola, principal, Baldwin Middle School, Tim Marr, principal. Brookside School, Jennifer Bumford, Principal, Lennox School, Bernice Acevedo, Principal, Plaza School, Mark Gray, Principal, Meadow School, Michelle May, Principal, Steele School, Lori Presley, Principal, Pupil Services Office, Dr. Ed Murphy, Director, District Clerk Office, Mary Hobbs, District Clerk, Facilities and Operations Office, Russ Rizzazzo, Director, Instructional Technology, Slash CCP, Karen Tasalanga, Director, uh, Literacy, Literacy, Literacy yeah. Assessments and Projects, Michelle Peterson, Director, Physical Education and Health Office, Eduardo Ramirez, Director, and Public Information Office, Christina Schmoll, Public Information Office. So moved. Move by Ms. Reed. Second. Move by Mrs. Dresco. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Establishment of travel mileage reimbursement rate for food travel at 54 cents per mile. So moved. By Mrs. Dresco, second by Mrs. O'Hagan. Any questions? This is set by the IRS. Right? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Establishment of Board of Education meetings in the annual meeting. Regular meetings August 10th at the district office, September 14th at the district office, October 9th at Brookside. Sorry, 19th. Uh, thank you. November 9th at Steele School, December 14th at Lennox School, January 11th at Plaza. February 8th, the district office, March 8th at Meadow, April 19th, the district office, May 10th at the high school, and June 14th at the middle school. Budget hearings, uh, budget meetings, hearing and vote, February 1st at the district office, February 8th at the district office, February 15th at the district office. May 3rd is the annual budget hearing at the district office, and May 16th is the budget vote at the high school. Oh, We've been doing them at the high school, so we're going to do them at the district office. Or Which one's going to the, the um, Sorry, the budget meeting. The first three. Yeah, so we've been doing them. We're just going to do okay. we're just going to do them. Community input meetings October 26th at the high school and January 25th at the middle school. And the BOCES budget vote April 20th at the district office.
Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, REFIT, Nassau Citizen Budget Committee, Baldwin Chamber of Commerce, Nassau Southern Bar Association, uh, and so forth. Move by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. Zareska. Any questions? No. No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Alright, dignity for all students coordinators. District Office, Dr. Michelle Gallo, Mrs. Anthony Mignola. Right. Okay. High schools, Catalina Lafragola, Dr. Arlene Guerrero, Dr. Stephen Boulder. Middle School, Tim Marr and Erica Taylor. Brookside School, Jennifer Bumford. Lennox School, Denise Acevedo. Meadow School, Michelle May. Plaza School, Mark Ray. And Steel School, Lori Preston. So, so we'll give this one to Mrs. Jereska, second by Mrs. Reed. Uh, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We made it through the reorganization right. portion. Aye. Now on to what everyone's here for the business. Aye. Are we good? Is anyone here? No, we're good. All right. The Board of Education accepts the minutes of the Board of Education meetings held on June 8th, June 20th, and June 30th, 2016, as detailed in the Thursday mail. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hagan. Any questions? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Treasurer's report. The Board of Education acknowledges receipts of the Treasurer's report for the month of May 2016 as detailed in the Thursday mail. So moved. Moved by Mrs. O'Hagan. Second. Second by Mrs. Reed. Any questions? Comments? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are going to forego the comments from the superintendent of schools. Uh, comments and reports from the Board of Education. Does anyone here want to report out? I just want to say what a great job that the high school did with respect to the uh, graduation. I mean, it was like clockwork. We were in and out an hour and 25 minutes. And I was just glad this we had a great day. And the speeches were terrific. Yes. <laughs> no, they were really, everybody spoke eloquently, the kids' behavior was wonderful, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful day, it was, it was really, it was really true. And they did a great job for organizing it. I like, and, was this the first year for the live stream? I wasn't there because my son had his kindergarten grad, pre-K graduation, but I did live stream it, I thought it was pretty cool. It was, yeah, it so was we great. Um, streamed it live before, but this is the first time we used live this stream as, live stream as the, the company, company, which is just a higher quality. Yeah, it was, yeah. And it is archived, so you can go back. I wanted to go back and see that kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the kids were like, you could tell that they were like, oh my God, I can't believe I made this. Exactly. <laughs> my mom was not going to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> it was really good. The only other thing I wanted to add to that, and it was absolutely wonderful, as was the middle school moving up, it was really yeah. very, very nice. It, again, smooth. I went to the one, mm -hmm. not, not both of them, but uh, very smooth. The other thing that uh, several of us were at was the mentoring dinner. Mm -hmm. And wow, that's that's just a three hanky evening. It really, the they select several teachers with the students that they mentor and they, the students speak about the teacher and the teacher speaks about the students and the experience they have and what each of them brought to that experience and it is just, it says a great deal about our staff and how much they go out of their way to work with kids and the kids are very eloquent in how much they benefit from mm -hmm. having somebody that is another friend, uh, at the high, whether it's at high school or uh, the middle of the School, but it's, it's a real, really nice thing. I went back to the middle school and graduated. It was kind of cool that we had a special guest in the house, even who, though who asked to remain on the house. Well, I mean, it's okay. So we can't talk about it now? No, you can. Yeah, but I, I know. But there's a reason why. I, well, I, know. I understand. So we had um, U.S. Attorney General around lunch in the afternoon, attending the afternoon uh, ceremony, which I've been told that the reason. It, Part that she has. she wanted to be there as, as Donnie relative, which you know, even though all of us here sitting on a dance know that we serve as a, in a public life, that we do whether even though people see us with that hat of board trustee or board president or U.S. Attorney General, they do we do have a private life. And it's nice for her to be able to do 
do that, even though she had super service and all and everything. And everyone's like, why didn't you announce her? Well, they really could, because she asked us not to. But it was nice to have mm -hmm. her there. She did meet with a few of us afterwards. Like, I'm surprised. We had to be on clearance pieces and everything. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I will say that, as long as we're, we're giving kudos, that one of the things that, um, that Secret Service um, said is that they were so impressed with uh, with Russ and with um, the folks in our school district because all of the protocols that they required for the safety of um, um, Attorney General Lynch were, they had all the answers, they had all the protocols. Um, it was probably one of the smoothest visits that they've, they've ever um, been able to plan for. So um, once again, you know, at Russ's office. Society. We had uh, students who painted what they called calming murals that are on permanent loan to Franklin General Hospital in their hospice unit. And um, it was really just a, a really wonderful ceremony. But uh, more than that, the fact that our kids give of themselves mm -hmm. um, to people who are in a really um, difficult time of life really speaks to who our kids are, who our teachers are, and the kind of work that. Baldwin as a school district does. Um, to that end, also our high school wind symphony, um, conducted by Scott Dunn and Kim Root, performed the first of its kind commissions concert um, at Adelphi University Performing um, Arts Center. Our kids had the opportunity to perform work that was written specifically for our wind sym symphony, and it was a concert, so it wasn't one piece. It was a piece is written each year, and it, this was the culmination of. I think 10 or 12 years of, of work. Uh, it was, uh, from all accounts, a beautiful uh, ceremony. And uh, the last thing that I'll, I'll share with the community is that um, we had uh, an opportunity for our high school students to conduct a survey in the high school um, with the Grand Avenue project that has been going on. There was a, a conversation that uh, some officials and my superintendent's advisory council had because they were asking me questions about what the project was all about and what kind of businesses were we trying to attract. And I thought, you know, I can speak for the community, but I can let the kids speak directly to the community. And so they met together. There was a survey that was done, and our AP statistics class took all of that data, collated all of that data, and presented to the Chamber of Commerce, the Civic Association, and um, County Legislator Laura Kern's office to share the feedback of our students. And so we have data from about 900 high school aged students about the types of businesses they want to see on Grand Avenue. Um, they have their feedback on, on the whole road project. Um, and apparently there's, there was enough interest generated at that presentation that Nassau County is asking to see the raw data of the survey that was done. And so from my perspective as an educator, what's, what's beautiful about the whole thing, not only from the community's perspective, but from an educational perspective, is that the work that our kids did in class has a direct impact on real life and future decisions that are going to be made by governmental agencies with that work. So um, so it was a really nice, I think, uh, culmination of the year for our AP staff. Um, I just wanted to chime in and, and sort of tag you on to the, uh, your discussion with the Adelphi concert. Um, I was surprised no one except maybe Anthony or your wife um, that I was at that concert. Um, and, and the, I mean, you know, um, you'll grow very tired after you hear me talk about it. Um, but not, you know, the kids perform, but in addition, actually, some of the composers were there. And uh, one of them conducted, um, and, uh, and and they all spoke, they spoke about the piece, and, and, uh, and, and some of them who had worked with the group uh, preparing them for the performance and spoke incredibly highly of the work that um, Scott Dunn and Kim Roof are doing in, in commissioning original works for the Wind Symphony. Uh, and just, you know, one of them said it was, uh, were visionary, visionary, uh, which 
Mr. Dunn. This one. Yeah, he was like, I'm not a visionary. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of tacking on to that, I know a number of our students in the music programs uh, are this summer attending NISA, State School of the Arts, um, which you have to audition for, uh, and, and audition all their programs. So there are a number of our students that are participating in these auditions, and um, auditioning quite a summer program, some of whom have scholarships to attend. So um, our kids are not only during the school year, but in the summer, they're still working at their, their craft. And actually, a number of them will be, whether permitting, performing at the community garden on, I think it's August 13th. Um, when my daughter was here, she got, she, she would be able to confirm that for mm -hmm. uh, But they will be performing uh, a vocalist on the Pella in the community garden, so keep an eye on it. Was in the Herald when I clicked it out. It was, so right. It All right, no other comment from the board. We are going to move into our first question and comment period. Um, those who are not aware, this is a time period is 30 minutes. Uh, each individual speaker can speak for up to three minutes. And uh, the topics, the one thing that we, have, we will continue to ask, and you've asked for the last several years, is that um, the comments and questions may be directed to me as the president and be respectful of members of the board, community, uh, teachers, and the rest of our staff here. So, uh, Mrs. Hobbs, you have a bit of time? I do. Hobbs our official timekeeper. Right, and uh, we do not talk about personnel matters and we do not talk about student matters, individual student matters here. So, uh, if you have issues regarding that, after we come in and make an appointment and see whoever is appropriate to speak to about that. Uh, right, and when you speak, uh, please give us your name and address. All right. Are we going to have a second comment period? We will co second comment period uh, as necessary. Pardon? Second comment period as necessary. Questions from the floor? School huh. Yes. Yeah. Um, Mr. President, I just, uh... Name in the church, you too? Oh, sorry. Robert Kugelmas, 979 Van Buren Street. Uh, earlier this year, um, one of the board members, Mr. Press, uh, asked for bus service to send uh, musicians, extracurricular, extracurricular activities to go to, I believe it was Sayase. And I was wondering what the status of that proposal was. Did was that ever follow through on? Was money appropriated for that? No. Uh, the other, I also wanted to follow up on uh, a couple of years ago, we got the uh, Mr. Robertson in on our bus service. To, uh, we, a few years back, when our budget for buses was $6 million, we passed a referendum to bring it down to $5 million. Last year, we spent, with the reduction, and it passed, and with the reduction in services, it, last year it was up to over six and a half million dollars, despite our superintendent's assertions that we're saving money, which we may be over, you know, a complete incompetence that was uh, budgeted in, you know, uh, with the change that Mr. Spinell and uh, Mr. Cohen made. So I, I'm just wondering where we stand with the uh, with the bus service. When, when are we going to get, uh, you know? When are we going to make the improvements? Uh, last year, our superintendent deferred making them. She wanted to wait a year to do it. And I was wondering what the status of you know, improving the uh, bus service and reducing the costs that were promised to uh, where it is right now. Um, we've discussed this during the years in terms of the savings that Mr. Robertson identified. We have realized those savings. We've made, we made changes to some of the bus routes to become a little more efficient um, in, in doing that. So there, there were savings that was realized that Mr. Robertson identified. So the changes you made last year are it? There's no changes for this year? Over That's, those are the, the changes we made last year were the changes that we identified. The additional changes that we had discussed um, required a larger discussion change uh, in the Potentially in the bus, in the distant distances, which would require a referendum. Uh, potentially changes in uh, jail schedule in, in our building. So that's a larger discussion that we 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 
we had the preliminary discussion, uh, we haven't had the fuller discussion because it was a complicated issue involved. There's a lot of moving parts in there. So it, it is something that we, we, we may, you know, we'll have conversations here about whether we want to talk about possibly implementing those changes. Uh, we have made a decision at this point. Okay. Yes, Mita J. Meriday, 758 Wesley Street. Um, so that's President Press Regulations. Um, my concern has to do with, I guess, the uh, selection processes for these uh, the school district appointments, i.e., attorneys, things of that nature. I kind of keep hearing the same names. I don't know if there's like an annual review process or if there is additional outreach, it just seems to me that there's a similar shade, tone, or connection, um, and that continues to bother me. Um, that's one issue. Secondly, sounds good, congratulations, welcome aboard, all that good stuff, but I know one of the issues that we addressed in terms of the budget and the increases for the budget had to do with the fact that we need more teachers, like actual teachers in the classrooms to address the, the teacher to student ratio. So I continue to be concerned and maybe someone can explain to me why we continue to bring on a, a additional superintendents and assistant superintendents when I'm not hearing about actual additional teachers or teachers aides or those individuals who, and if it's if it's happening, fine. I'm a taxpayer who has no children in the district, and as most of you have seen me and know who I am, I still come here because my money still comes out of my pocket to pay for kids I don't have. So again, I continue to be concerned because the school budget, the school taxes are the largest chunk of my funding. And i just like to know that the funding that I'm being told when I go to the budget road shows is addressing the issues that the residents are saying that they have because there are too many kids and things are happening to the children and we're coming up with, we have another branch or a pillar and then we attach somebody else at the top and we still have the vacuum. That's not an additional position. Okay. So this is his, uh, Dr. Saniak is moving on to another district. Mr. McNally is filling the vacancy. Okay. It's not a new position. Okay. Well, that's, that's a good thing. Sorry about that. Cause, and I really liked her. And no offense to you. <laughs> <laughs> I really like her. I mean, I a few people that I like. So I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> so I would like, like I said, to have the procurement process to be addressed. And one of the other things that was talked about as well is up at Schubert that there was discussions I was really encouraged about some of the additional things in the academies and things of that nature that were going to be taking place about addressing entrepreneurship and things like that and I didn't hear anything else kind of about that and I would also be interested in the information that the students in the Grand Avenue project um, because there are still um, opposing viewpoints with regard to that, and I, I heard that you shared it with the, you said Civic Association and Baldwin has two. I know there seems to be this marriage of, you know, convenience or location with Baldwin Civic Association, but Baldwin Oaks is the oldest and has actually been doing more of the work that the BCA tries to, unfortunately, take the credit for. If it benefits all the residents, fine, I'm happy, I'm, I'm good for that. But there are opposing viewpoints and there are just other issues, particularly for me, as most of you know, that the safety of our students is always uppermost for me. And I'm still seeing students coming from the high school who are not crossing the streets at the few crossing guards that we have in their other communities, Merrick being one of them, that has like two crossing guards for some of the streets that they have for their summer school program. And we've got one kind of like, you know, spread out every six blocks. And the county and the town are saying that school crossing guards are the responsibility of the school district. Yeah, I know, keep hearing the same thing, but I'm just, I'm just saying. And they just had to do a public hearing earlier today, and I know my time is up, I'll be finished in a second. Um, I was at a public hearing today for the Public Service Commission because of the whole issue with the water company trying to raise their rates by over 8%. 
and that also impacts particularly residents in Baldwin because uh, many of our residents are still affected by Sandy. So as we're addressing all of these issues, I'm just hoping that we become more proactive in, in discussing these things so that residents kind of are aware of the things that are going to be impacting them. But again, the, the safety issue, like I said, is key for me because I don't want to risk another child possibly getting hit, including the two that almost jumped in front of my car um, coming onto Grand Avenue because they just decided they wanted to play chicken and run across the street. Uh, I'll address the selection process in terms of the appointments that we we made the, in certain, I'm, I'm assuming you don't have a problem with the ball being appointed as a Oh, I'm fine with the pay. Okay. Um, <laughs> the accountants, the uh, the attorneys, things like of that nature, um, the auditors. Uh, we uh, the law requires us to go out every five years for the auditors for the auditors for our, just for the external auditors. just for the external audit. What would you do the other auditors to you after you do that? Right. Sort of an effect. You want to select your most important. Right. So we do. So we went out um, in 2014. We did an RFP for the lawyers, the auditors, um, all of them. And at that point, we got bids from all of them. We analyzed them, and we made a selection uh, based on a number of factors. Uh, and, and in most cases, actually, if not all of them, we can recall, we chose the, the uh, provider with the lowest actual. So um, that's in terms of selecting them, and, and when they when we go out for an RFP, we ask them for a multi-year um, projection of funds, fees, um, and we make our decisions based on that. And, and, you know, and we're always evaluating whether or not we're happy with the service that we're getting. And at any point that we're not happy with the service that we're getting, we can always go out for another RFP. Well, we have necessarily felt the need to do that for this year, mm -hmm. but you know, every year we do have conversations about mm -hmm. um, whether or not you know, we are happy with the service. So, and on the crossing guards, honestly, if there are people, names of people that are telling you otherwise, um, I'd be interested in knowing who the names of those people are and what organization they're from. School districts are not allowed to hire crossing guards. We are forbidden from hiring crossing guards. They cannot be on our payroll. So whoever is telling you that, I am telling you with 110% certainty, we are not allowed to hire crossing guards. Period. End of sentence. Anyone telling you anything different is wrong. Well, we had this conversation last year, yeah. so like I said, you know, I'm I'm, I'm on the record right. on the record in, in Mineola and Town of Hempstead. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can talk to Norma Gonzalez and Tony Santino because they're the ones who keep I keep circling the wagons when I'm talking about that. And as we're seeing the facade work and everything now actually finally being done in Baldwin, and I try to give credit where credit is due. But I said in the meantime we were still trying to fight. Now you see where that post is going up on that corner of Stanton, because apparently we did fight them putting up right. the wall and the gate the first time. Mm -hmm. They tabled that decision and brought it up again, kind of untabled it a couple of weeks later. And by the time we found out about it, it was already approved in a modified version, but it's still going to be a wall that's going to be detrimental to that. But safety point. But I'm talking about safety. It's right on. It's say it, it is a safety issue that has that impacts. That's what I'm saying. There are things that are going on in the community that if we're not collectively involved in addressing it, it's going to impact the safety of our students. Because right now you just see the brick. But once they fill those spaces in, people coming around that corner and children and people riding those bicycles coming off that street, it is not going to be brick. Project first started, mm -hmm. just now mm -hmm. wrote a letter speaking to that and about the safety issues, the safety concerns. That we right, and we were at the and we were at the town of Hempstead, mm -hmm. and we addressed that then okay. when Kate Murray was there, right. and because of the opposition, the people who couldn't come to a ten o'clock meeting, because mm -hmm. I'm not like myself, I work on the overnight, but we were able to fight it, mm -hmm. but they didn't tell us that they were going to table it. Mm -hmm. So when they decided to untable it. Of course, by the time we found out, it was literally like it was a done deal, and then you see in the brickwork. So I do know that some people are still trying to 
write letters or whatever, at least we can get maybe a clear fencing within the bricks. But that's what I'm saying. We all have to kind of work together to, to address this stuff. Um, yeah, as far as the collaboratory, um, the second floor of Schubert, um, we're still talking about, um, in terms of renting that space, we're still in kind of negotiations around renting that space, but that is moving forward. Um, that collaboration with Malloy is moving forward, and a lot of the work and the, uh, the coursework is, is starting at the beginning of the school year. Okay. So there's, there's different pieces of it. The piece I know that you're probably most interested in is that whole entrepreneurship on the second floor. Um, we're still working that out, um, doing a lot of research. We want to plan it right the first time and execute it right the first time. So that is going to happen. Um, it's just a matter of, of when. Okay. And is there room and opportunity for input? Um, yeah, I mean, you're welcome to share your input with me. I have no, you know, no problem with okay. that. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Seeing none, we're going to call that first comment session to close. We move on to the business of the board. All right, Board of Education approves the actions of the Superintendent of Schools and Board of Education Executive Officer to the Committee on Special Education, Sub CSE, the Committee on Preschool Special Education, 504 Committee for Services in November 2015 and January, February, March, April. June 2016 as detailed in the Thursday mail. So, so. Moved by Mrs. Three, second by Mrs. Doresco. Uh, this contains information pertaining to students, so we do not discuss it in public. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Board of Education approves the home tutoring and special education service reports as detailed in the Thursday mailing. Moved um, by Mrs. Doresco, second by Mrs. Three. Again, this contains information pertaining to students, so we do not discuss it in public. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all right. Uh, the board president, I'm calling for consideration of business items in tonight's agenda as a consent item. This includes business items 5 and 8 through 11, which pertain to bids. Business items 15 through 16, pertaining to special education. Business items 23 through 29, which are insurance. Business items 36 through 40, which pertain to us uh, declaring items out of the uh, 36 through 40. Uh, well, just does any, uh, or any of, does anyone want to pull any of those items out for discussion? All right, so then um, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda, including business items 5, 8 through 11, 15 and 16, 23 through 29, and 36 through 40. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Reed. Second. Second by Mrs. Zareska. Um, we ask a question if there are any questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 Education adopts the resolution provided by the Nassau County Legislature and Board of Assessors authorizing a tax 